Hey guys, squats are literally one of the most incorrectly done exercises in the gym. Literally nine out of 10 times I see someone squatting, they're doing a mistake I list in this video. So chances are you're gonna find at least one mistake that you're currently doing and then can then afterwards fix it. Anyway, towards the end of the video, I give you a mistake that I wish I knew when I first started because when I made that small change, that brought the most amount of change out of any mistake here listed today. If you're new here, my name's Jacob. I've been training for just over three years now and I've made a bunch of mistakes throughout my journey, which hopefully you guys can then learn from. And my mission is to help you guys build the physique you want and hit your goals, whatever they may be. Also, I believe in actionable advice, actively taking away stuff from videos and learning from it and not just being a mindless consumer of content. So without further ado, let's get into the actual video now. Mistake number one. The mistake is anterior pelvic tilt or basically just having an arched lower back whilst you're squatting. The first mistake I've done myself for many months and as a direct result, I injured my lower back and I was out of squatting for months. So you know how when you're squatting, you're meant to squat with a fully neutral and straight back. What I was accidentally doing was I was rounding my back and sticking my butt out, which caused my lower back to basically be rounded a tiny bit at that bottom bit. And that caused me so much headache. I didn't even know I was doing this until months later when I was recording myself, which at that point I had already injured myself and the damage was done. So it wasn't much help, but at least I found out. So the problem with this is it makes you a lot weaker and makes you a lot more prone to injury as I have personally found out. To fix this, I'm gonna link a video by Squat University. So after this video, I want you to go watch that if that problem is something you're having. Mistake number two. So a quick question for you guys. What do you think would be better for le overall leg development? Do you think a little baby squat where your knees barely go 90 degrees or a beautiful ass to grass squat like how Clarence does it? The answer is the ass to grass squat, of course. The reason you wanna do ass to grass or at least do power lifting depth is because of your overall leg activation is way higher. You get more glutes, you get more quads, you get more adductors. You just overall build your legs better with the deeper squat. And it's also a little bit safer due to there being a little bit less weight. Like obviously you can quarter squat a lot more weight than you can ask to grass. So therefore it's gonna be safer, better stimulus to fatigue ratio. And going deeper is also better for your mobility, your flexibility and your structure as well. And that'll make you more injury resilient. So basically squat deeper than last time for additional gains. And the only time the partial or the 90 degree baby squat is better is for athleticism. If you wanna develop a better vertical jump or the only other time is if you have a severe mobility issue or an injury that causes you to squat a lot higher or if you go any deeper, you're gonna hurt yourself again. Those are the only two cases that I can think of. And of course, that doesn't mean if you can't do ass to grass now, you're screwed. You can build up and train to it. Basically, everyone is capable of doing an ass to grass squat. You just have to slowly build up to it and allow your body to adapt. Mistake number three, incorrect stance. You could be trying to squat in an anatomically incorrect position that doesn't actually suit your body. This is bad because it could be limiting your strength and muscular gains and it could lead to higher risk of injury down the line. To find your correct stance, I'll let Mr. Five-time Olympia winner, Chris Bumstead, explain it to you. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you guys a quick test to see whether you should be squatting with a narrow stance or a wide stance. It's super easy. All you have to do is start narrow, pull your knee straight up in front of your body, and if you get stuck at like 90 degrees or a little bit over, then you probably shouldn't be squatting in a narrow stance. But if you can pull your knee all the way up and touch your chest, deeper than 90 degrees, then you're good to squat in a narrow stance. To see if you should be squatting in a wider stance, you wanna pull your leg out to the side, do the same kind of test. Pull your knee up to your chest. Again, if you get stuck at 90 degrees, you probably shouldn't be squatting wide. If you can pull it all the way up and touch your chest, then you can squat in a wider stance. Mistake number four, having your heels rise with every rep. It's a problem because you're not balanced properly and you won't be generating power efficiently. Basically, it's just causing you to be a lot weaker and taking away some of your stability. To fix it, there could be multiple reasons. I'll just list a few common ones. You could have really bad ankle mobility, and I'd recommend stretching out your ankle, finding specific stretches and working on your ankle mobility. You could have weak glutes, and in which case I'd recommend doing more booty exercises, like long stanced split squats, or glute bridges or hip thrusts and training those at a higher priority. And finally, bad hip mobility. To fix this, I'd recommend 
developing strength in a deep squat. So my favorite exercise for this is literally just go into a deep squat, like an Oscar squat and hold out, say like a 20 kilo dumbbell, just like that. Just like a goblet squat, literally just hold the weight and your hips, you'll feel everything start to open up and it develops strength as you're not just sitting with body weight. You do have a bit of weight there. Mistake number five, foot positioning and balance. For this, it's a problem because you're being inefficient it's going to lead to a higher risk of injuries and you're not gonna be optimally generating enough power. So to fix this, there's two things you can do. First, I want you to learn how to properly brace yourself. I made a video detailing how to do this. It's a bit old and the video is a little bit bad, but the information itself is really good. So I'd recommend go watch it and come back or just watch the whole video and then go watch it after. Doing this will cause you to be properly balanced and have a higher degree of stability. So it's always good to be properly braced. Now for the feet positioning, I want you to consciously think about this for a few sessions. I want you to consciously think about driving directly through the feet. To make this easier, you could use the tripod stance, which is where you distribute pressure equally along your heel, big toe and little toe. Then think about grabbing the ground with your feet and corkscrewing yourself into the ground. If you do this right, you will feel your glutes and feet light up, you'll feel more stability. Mistake number six, just doing the same squat variation and not changing things up. Rotating through variations and not just doing the same variation for years is such a valuable tip that I wish I knew earlier. Or at the very least, not using different variations of the same squat. Not changing up specifics of that same lift, such as varying up the, the rep range a little bit, or at least having a light and a heavy day, or just varying something at least. Okay. Who do you think is going to have more gains by the end of it? The guy who does a 3 by 10 on the same back squat for 3 years? Or the guy who does a 3 by 3 heavy day on Monday and a 3 by 8 lighter day on Thursday? And then a few months later, he does a front squat specialization where for a few months he does nothing but front squats, different rep ranges again, and then comes back to back squats. So yeah. Who do you think is going to get more leg gains? The answer is obviously the guy who does the three by three, it's the front squat specialization, the guy who changes stuff up. Also, I don't want you to misconstrue what I say. I'm not saying change things literally every week. I'm saying every few months, change a slight variable, change a rep range, change the weight range, add in a different variation. Not every few weeks, you need to give your body time to adapt and get stronger in that same position. And yeah, what this does is it helps prevent monotony and more importantly, it helps keep adaptations coming in, thus making you stronger and giving you more muscular gains. So basically add in squat variations every few months or change something up. And as a result, you will get more gains. Keyword being every few months, not every week. So if you like this video, I made a video detailing seven pull-up mistakes, killing your back gains. That's in the same style as this video here. If that sounds interesting to you, click here or here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Later, guys.